Hey guys, today I'm reading Pocket Full of Colors, The Magical World of Mary Blair Disney Artist Extraordinaire. This is... Okay, whatever. Mary Blair lived her life in color, color, vivid wild color. From her imaginative childhood to her career as an illustrator, designer, and animator for Walt Disney Studios, Mary wouldn't play by the rules. At a time when studios wanted to hire men and think in black and white, Mary painted um, twinkling emerald skies, peach giraffes with tangerine spots, and magenta horses that could fly. She painted her world. Three creative inspired women, Amy Guillermo, Jacqueline Torville, and Bridget Berger, team up to tell the joyful story of a creative inspired trail blazing woman who paved their way. Pocket Full of Colors, The Magical World of Mary Blair Disney Artist Extraordinaire. Amy Guglielmo and Jacqueline Torville, illustrated by Bridget Berger. Under a white blue sky on a red dirt road in a lemon yellow house, there lived a little girl named Mary. Other children collected marbles or dolls, but Mary collected colors of every shade and every hue. One day, Mary's parents announced they were moving out west. As she waved goodbye to the yellow house, Mary tucked her friend Lemon in her pocket. Mary would miss the happy home, but she had new colors to collect. Driving across the sun-bleached desert, Mary spied a Russell Taub and Sienna. When she arrived in California, she glimpsed the azure ocean and found groves of golden fruit dripping from viridian trees. In the city, she discovered steel gray buildings and mouth-tinted skies. Mary opened her sketchbook. She mixed her paints. She would save these shades for just the right time. When she was older, Mary went to an to art school. She met Lee. He showed her rosy pink and blushing red. Um, she kept those colors in her heart. Together, Mary and Lee painted rainbows. But it was the Great Depression and people were poor. No one was buying rainbows except one place. Mary landed a job at Walt Disney Studios, one of the first women ever to be hired. Finally, a place for her colors to run and dance and play as they pleased. Hollywood, Hollywood Land, Disney Ave, Mickey Street, Animation, In Between, In Layout Depth, depth. Special X, Ink and Paint, Animation.
Yeah, that's the stuff that it says on there. But on her first day of work, she, the man in charge didn't want to talk about Cerulean or Kaladin or Ceres. They were only interested in black and white. She tried. She tried, but her colors were too vivid, too wild. When Mary turned in her work, all her ideas were rejected. Twinkling emerald skies, the men turned them blue. The men turned them blue. Magenta horses that could fly, the men made them brown and put them in the stable. Peach giraffes with tangerine spots, her bosses just shook their heads. They didn't know what to make of her art. But, but what the men who owned the company did? He loved her color so much, he asked Mary to join him on a trip to South America to meet some new ones. Mary delighted in the colors of Brazil, Argentina, and Peru. She worked hard to capture the vibrant scenery. When it was time to go home, Mary's bags burst with fuchsia, teal, aquamarine, indigo, lime green, and banana yellow. After Mary returned to Disney, her concept art for the studio's Upcoming films grew even more adventurous as she drew upon the eye-popping shade, shades she'd observed in South America. <laughs> Cinderella needed a teal pumpkin coat. The caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland could only be aquamarine, and the mermaids in Peter Pan simply had to be lime green. This time, some of Mary's ideas were accepted, but most of her art was still considered too modern, too abstract, and just not right. Mary's colors encouraged her to leave the men with the black lines and strict rules. So she did. Mary quickly found new work, desi new work designing advertisements, illustrating picture books for children, and creating sets for plays and television commercials. She enjoyed the freedom of these new jobs, but Mary missed Walt. Then one day, out of the blue, out of the blue, her phone rang. It was Walt. Mary, I have a, a project for you. I need your wild and beautiful colors. His voice boomed. Walt explained his idea to build a magical ride that would teach people about culture from around the world. The ride had to be full of color, which meant there was only one person for the job. Mary, you know about colors I've never even heard of before. Mary smiled. 
And then she frowned as she remembered the rules and the lines and the men in charge who didn't understand her colors of, or her style of art. There was only one answer, one way to answer. Yes, said Mary. But her yes came with a condition. This time Mary wanted to be the one in charge. Walt welcomed her aboard. Mary's paint um, seemed to sparkle when she hung up the phone. She had never been to places like China or Morocco or Kathmandu in Nepal, but her colors had. Sitting down to work, she squeed, squeezed out dabs of paint, lemon yellow, aquamarine, and azure, malve, taupe, and tangerine, russet, sienna, and steel gray, celadon, cerulean, cerise, magenta, teal, indigo, and emerald shined from her palette. And when she picked up her brush, the colors Mary had so carefully collected all her life took her on a trip around the globe. When the work was done and the ride opened, people gasped in awe. In awe. It's a small world. It's a small world. Was sen a sensation. Was a sensation. When it was Mary's turn to take the ride, she leaned back in the boat and let her colors wash over her. It was a world of laughter, a world of smiles and color, color, color everywhere. This at last was Mary's world. Um, so that's what I'm going to end for right now. Bye guys.